Today, our epic war mage gets some new armor as we learn how to make these spell slinger tassets. Stay tuned. What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Now, if you've been following the show for any amount of time, you know that I've been making these kind of costume builds. One of which is my epic war mage, who I love because this hood and this wand. You can't tell me those things don't look dope. God, I still love those. Anyways, for our next piece of this costume, we're making this hip protector slash tacit armor set. Real quick, I pulled inspiration for the general design of this from a company called Dracolite. Or Dracolite, I think that's how you pronounce it. This is them up here. I will leave a link to their website in the description below. Definitely go check them out if you're into this kind of stuff. Hell, check them out if you're not into this kind of stuff. It's still really cool. Anyways, I saw this little number up here and I loved how they put it together. I figured I'd kind of give something similar a shot with my own little spin to it. But this build is the perfect vehicle for a lot of really cool little tips that I've been able to gather as time has gone on. Now, this is a leather project and I've covered a lot of leather project skills before. So if you look up here, there's gonna be a link to my leather playlist. All the videos that came before this one might touch on some of the stuff that I'm covering here in a little bit more detail. All right, so I'll stop jabbering and we can level up this skill. Prepping the leather. Now for this build, like a lot of the build I do, I am basing it off of art from my partner, Middle Mist Red. Let me shout out my team real quick too, because they're dope. Middle Mist Red is coming up with a lot of this art and just helping with a lot of the stuff in the background. And Senpai Fish makes all of the art for our website and a lot of the tooling stuff. And she is prolific and awesome. Definitely stop in the website, link in the description below to check out some of her work. Anyways, to turn something from just a drawing into an actual thing, I needed to take measurements. I just kind of roughly looked at where I wanted it to go and measured out what that space looked like. And real quick, I'm gonna kind of shoot myself in the foot here because eventually I'm gonna be selling this template. But for real, for a lot of these projects, you don't need a template. First of all, the first whole part of all of these videos usually show you how to make the template yourself, but I really don't know anything more than you do. I'm just kind of making these up as I go. Maddie draws an awesome picture, I put it on a larger piece of paper, and then I cut it out of leather. That's about it. All that to say, if you want something like this, definitely give making your own pattern a shot. It's not hard to do. Now because each one of these little panels here are symmetrical left and right, I start by taking a piece of paper and just folding it in half. Then I mark out how tall I want my leather piece to be, and also mark half the width. With those marks in, I just kind of sketched until it looked like the drawing. Then once I cut it out and unfold my paper, it's perfectly symmetrical. Just like those snowflakes you made out of construction paper when you were a kid. This makes it dead easy to make something perfectly symmetrical. I of course did the same thing with the bottom, but since I wanted to have this kind of cool overlap and I wanted these two pieces to play well together, I used that first top piece I made as a guide, just to ensure the two shapes look nice together. Again, just kind of making it up as I go. Cool, so armed with those templates, I just went ahead and traced them onto some eight ounce veg tan leather. Now I recently picked up this round knife and really kind of want to get good at it without losing my fingers. So this project was a perfect opportunity to practice with it. That being said, you do not need a fancy knife to do this. You can get it done with just a box cutter if that's all you have. And once that leather's all cut out, I do the standard thing of prettying up those cut edges by using my edge beveler to round them off a bit and then hitting it with the edge slicker just to get all those little fibers and stuff pressed back into place. Again, something I've covered in every other leather project, so if you have any questions about that edge treatment, just look down below. Now, quick note, not prepped in this step here are the other little leather bits, like the, the little straps here and the belt and these little bottle holders. That's just because, as I said before, I was winging it. I needed these two main plates here basically ready to go first before I can kind of figure out where everything went and what it was all gonna look like. I just didn't want you to think you missed something. Moving on, tooling the leather. Now this is by far the most intricate design I've done yet while tooling leather. Wasn't that it was really hard to do, it's just like there was a lot of line work, right? Anyways, I found the fastest and easiest way to kind of get my art onto my leather is by using some baking paper. Because we have to wet the leather to get our shapes onto it, I found that the baking paper, it has kind of a waxy finish on one side and it holds up really well against that moisture. Now again, we want this shape to be symmetrical, so it's gonna be a lot like what we did before. I start by tracing out my leather pieces onto the paper and then cutting those shapes out. Then I just fold that shape directly down the middle. 
Again, I use that top piece of leather as a starting point, just because on the picture, I can see where the rest of my design falls in relation to this little point here at the bottom. From here, I just sketched it in, making it as close as possible to the image. Now, if you can size it outright on your computer or something, I'm sure you can just print this out and make it a lot easier on yourself. But for me, I like to draw and I like being able to make things fit in the exact space that I need them to. Anyways, once that side is good, just flip it over. You'll notice you can see your line work right through the paper. Now all you have to do is trace what you've already done. As a result, we have these perfectly symmetrical pieces of art. I'll have you know I'm really proud of that little trick. I figured it out myself during my quiver build and I was like, yes, give myself one of these. All right. All right, and you know the drill for getting the image actually on the leather. Just moisten the surface of the leather, position your image where you want it, and trace over the lines to make an indent. Now, this is my first little tip that I want to give you that you've given me. So somebody mentioned in the comment section last time I was doing a leather project like this, that instead of using a stylus to mark my lines, I should use a pen because then I can see where I've been before. And this is a game changer. I could indeed perfectly see where I've been before and the transfer was just as clean as with a stylus. I need to go back and find which one of you gave me that tip. For now, thank you random person on the internet. You have made my life better and I'm paying it forward to the rest of you. Okay, with those lines all laid out, I moved on to my freshly sharpened swivel knife and started to cut those lines in. Then I re-moistened the leather a bit and made them pop with my bevel tool. And here, rapid fire like is another tip for you. So I noticed whenever I was beveling like this, it always left this kind of a wavy pattern in my line. Upon doing a bit of research, I realized that my leather was too wet. What you need to do is you need to moisten the leather and then let it dry to the point where the color has returned back to normal. I say let it dry, the color just kind of changes back, but it's still not moist to the touch, but like cool to the touch. See, the reason I always got this wrong is because I have no patience, just none. But by actually being patient, the results were stupidly smooth, really nice. The difference was immediate. It's those little tiny things that are like the difference between somebody who's been doing this for a long time and just some schmuck who dabbles in his basement every once in a while. You know what though? Getting better every time, which is kind of the purpose of this show. And I honestly think I am. I dig how this is coming out. Now I told you this episode was gonna be full of these hot little tips. I have another one for you. So in a quest to make my line work even more smooth, I decided to try using this round clay tool. I figured by just retracing my lines, I'd be able to smooth out any of the other tool marks that might be there. What I didn't anticipate was the fact that it would also round off the edges of all of my line work. Which, if that's not what you're going for, obviously don't do this, but I loved how it looked. It almost made it seem like these lines were just kind of raising up out of the leather organically. Again, this is a trick I'm gonna be using over and over. I love the way that looked. Just full of tips today. Oh, we're so useful here. Now because of a combination of tooling and the way it was wrapped up while it was being stored, it had kind of a concave shape. But I needed this to fit around my thigh. So I needed to have more of kind of a rounded shape in this direction here. So to fix this, I just wet the front and the back of the leather. Then I secured it in a rounded shape to dry. This made it roughly take on the shape that I wanted and hugs the thigh perfectly. All right, so one of the things I love most about my inspiration Dracolite armor that I showed you were these little alchemy bottles that were on them. I love it and I want it. This had me going store to store trying to find little vials with a cork in them, which was actually really hard to find. Luckily, I found this little number in the jewelry section of all places. Apparently, people use them to hold like necklaces and earrings and stuff. I shall use them for poisons and healing herbs. Now, of course, I want these bottles to stay in position on the tacit here. I've seen a bunch of little ways to do this from making this kind of long pouch to having it like the way the other armor did it where it made this kind of snaking thing with rivets in the middle. My fancy solution here was this little T-shaped piece of leather. Here's how it works. I just position the bottle where I want it and wrap the leather around it. Then I lock the little ends in with rivets to make a tiny pouch. I decided three of these would look really cool in the space that I had open. And of course, as with every other piece in here, I beveled and slicked all the edges. All right, so the way these two pieces are put together is you've got these little top straps here that have a loop on the bottom of them. 
Then the bottom piece here, the tacit, just has an, an actual little belt strap with a buckle and little, little sizing holes on them that go through that loop and connect everything together. For these top straps here, I just cut three strips a half inch wide and made them look pretty. For the loops, I decided to use these D-rings. All I simply do is loop the leather through those D-rings and then I'll hold them together with a rivet. Now I made three of these, one per side to hold these together and one extra in case I wanted to hang like a magic scroll to it or something. Just a little extra utility loop and I love it. In fact, that's one of the things I like most about the original design I saw is it was technically two pieces. You have this kind of hip armor and then you have the tacit, but you can decide not to use the tacit and you still have these little loops here to attach whatever else you want to attach to it. Upon looking at it, I thought that was a really clever design. So kudos to them. Okay, and as for the bottom straps here and the belt, they're just the standard way you make belts. I have a video for that specifically right here. It's super easy to do, just a lot to explain for an already long video and I've already done it a whole bunch of times. What is worth showing and I haven't covered before is this fancy little end of the belt here. This is simply a fancy little metal bit that came with my buckle assembly. All I did to make this fit here was trace it onto the end of my belt and then trace the inside of it a little bit smaller just to make up for the thickness of the metal that this thing is. And once that end is cut to shape, you see it fits right inside of there. It all attaches to the end once everything is like dyed and all that, but look at that, that looks dope. I just hadn't used one before and I think they're really cool. And for all my straps and bits and baubles here, I just used the edger tool to give it a little extra something so they didn't look so boring next to all the cool tooling. And with that, everything is looking sexy. I was already in love with how kind of everything was coming out in this project. Again, it was a stretch before I pat myself in the back this hard, but it didn't look good. With that, we can move on to dyeing and painting. Now for my coloring, I'm just using a USMC black and I'm using a rolled up piece of fabric as a dauber. I found that doing this gives me some really solid coverage. Now, I would love to have dip dyed, but I've noticed that when I dip dye things, for some reason lately, I've been getting like a sheen on everything. And it also has a tendency to stiffen my leather. I think by just applying it to the surface, it doesn't penetrate as deeply and it seems to let the leather kind of breathe and, and stay a little bit more supple. At least that's what I've been finding. Let me know if you do something different and if I'm doing something wrong to make it kind of stiff that way. I also found with that fabric dauber, the coverage on the flesh side of the leather is much easier because it holds a lot and it just kind of dabs in deep into the fibers. And once the edges were dyed, I then moved on to all the smaller bits of leather as well. Cool, so with everything all a solid black, I decided to do all my line work here with a silver leather paint. This stuff went on pretty thick, so it didn't take very long to get the coverage I was looking for. I just used a pretty thin paintbrush and took my time. I did find, however, if I happened to miss and get a little bit of dye outside of my lines, it was not a big deal. I just went back in with a paintbrush full of the black leather dye and edged right up against my line work. And doing this made the cleanest job I think I've ever done. Like, look at those. Those look professional. Those are great. I'm really proud of how those came out. Like, that line work is just... <sighs> Now to help protect my beautiful leather and give everything a nice shine, I hit it with some leather bomb and then polished it up. Finally, and my last hot tip of the day, one of you posted down in the comments section that instead of using like a gum tragacanth on the sides, you just use a block of beeswax. And this worked really well. Just rubbing it along the sides already started to make all the fibers nice and slick. And then using my slicker made this a nice round even seal along the edges. Again, whoever did that in the comment section, great tip, that works awesome. All right, so with all the pieces ready to go, we can move on to putting it all together. All right, here we are at the assembly phase. I kept this really easy and just put everything together with rapid rivets. So to make sure everything laid out correctly, I first lay the hip guard over the tassets just to see where the straps are gonna have to hang. Happy with all the straps lengths, I locked in those D-rings with a rivet. Then I locked them in place onto the hip guard. Now with those in place, I used the belt as a measurement to see how wide of a space I needed. Then I locked the bottoms of them in place with the rivet, forming this nice belt loop. Next, I wanted to place these other little belts that'll lock into the D-rings here. To do this, I just secured them to the rings where they'd go and then lined them up with the tacit so I can see where they fell. I secured those with two rivets a piece, just to keep them from turning and swaying on me. And that actually worked out really well. Everything lines up perfectly and is nice and secure. Cool, chugging right along to set up these little bottle pouches here. 
I first lined up the middle tee wherever I thought it looked cool, and then I locked the bottom into place. This is far more art than science. I just kind of lined it up with like the point down here in the bottom because I thought it would look neat. From there, I slid the vial into place and wrapped the little arms around it to see where the rivet should fall. Then I locked them into place as well. Doing so made this perfect little pouch for these bottles to sit in. Look at that, super snug, made for this little bottle, it's perfect. I just repeated this whole process two more times. And I love these! Like they look so cool and once I have little, little like colored potions in them or like herbs or whatever, oh, it's gonna be so dope, they look cool. It's the little things. All right, for the, ah, the pièce de résistance, we're gonna jazz up this belt here. Now, if you look in the back of this little end cap, you're gonna see it has two little holes where screws will go. These tiny screws have sharp points on the ends of them. When screwed in, those little sharp ends stab into the leather, holding everything on securely. Finally, I punched my sizing holes in the belt and finished them off with some nice grommets. These not only look dope, but are gonna add a little bit of extra strength and help stop those holes from stretching out over time. And bam, one more beautiful piece from my epic War Mage build. More than any other build I've done so far, I feel like this one was a culmination of a lot of tips you gave me. Like the beeswax bit, using a pen to make the marks, how wet to get the leather, these are all things that you guys have taught me. So thank you, I think we did a pretty good job today. Now if you like, what you helped me do. Why don't you give me some of that thumbs up love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also real fast shout out to my newest Patreon, Joe Batsford. Joe it is supporters like you that keep the lights on and make it so I can afford leather and stuff. It could be kind of an expensive hobby, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, special thanks to you and just all my patrons. It, it means so much to me that you like what I do here enough to help support me and help this channel grow. I love you all, thank you so much for what you do. If you like supporting what I do here, maybe consider becoming a patron, link in the description below. Now, if there's anything you'd like to see me cover, why don't you leave it in the comment section and I'll add it to the list. All right, well, I should get going. I need to find like poisons and stuff to put into my empty little bottles here. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you. I love it and I want it.